Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to The Sims 4 speedbuilding video or welcome to the channel if you are new here. So in today's video, I'm going to be building in the world of Henderson on Bagley, which is the world that we got from the expansion pack The Sims 4 Cottage Live In, and I'm going to be building a small family farm. So this house ends up having three bedrooms and two bathrooms and it's built on a 30 by 20 lot. I recently had a little look at my channel and I actually realised that I don't really have any smaller farms on my channel. I haven't really seemed to build like a smaller, more maintainable farm yet somehow because I've done a few farm builds before in the past but something that I've noticed is all the farms that I seem to build they're quite big so I've built previously on like 50 by 40 lots or like massive just massive family farms with like multiple cow shares and loads of different land for your sims to do some gardening and I realized it might be a good idea to build something on the smaller side a little bit more maintainable and so yeah that is pretty much what I did so I hope you guys like it even though this farm is quite small I still wanted it to be filled with loads of stuff for your sims to do so I still wanted there to be you know like the beekeeping heart I still wanted there to be a chicken coop I still wanted there to be like laundry so there is a washing machine and tumble dryer on the inside of this build but then there's like a little hanging line outside I placed down I think it's five planters you know them garden plots that we got from the cottage living expansion pack I placed down at five outside so if your sims wanted to they could grow one of every single type of oversized crop I just wanted it to be small but still practical and just a little bit more unmaintainable because yeah like I said previously I built so many different farms and I've built a good handful amount of them but they all just seem to be in different styles and not so much different sizes so like previously I've built like Japanese farms I've built modern farms I've just built you know a classic English farm but they're all just really big and so yeah I'm really happy with this small little farm I think it's so cute and I feel like for like gameplay wise it's probably a little bit more easier to manage because everything's just kind of like at your fingertips also where I am building on a 30 by 20 lot I was really restricted in the amount of space that I had because the actual house itself I mean you can see that I pretty much built the structure already and I just kind of like moved it over to the left hand side because I wanted there to be more so like a side farm rather than like a back farm just because it's easier for gameplay but where I was building on a 30 by 20 lot I was really restricted by space so there does only end up being one animal shed I think if you were to download this build of the gallery, there will be a cow in there because when I came in and I was placing this build, I just, I placed down a cow because I personally prefer playing with cows in my gameplay rather than llamas. I don't know if anyone else has that same preference, but I just prefer cows. They're a little bit more farm like to me and so there will be a cow if you download this build of the gallery but feel free to delete the cow and the chickens they just kind of they come with the house but you can definitely just delete them and replace it with a llama if you fancy or if you wanted to you can just completely get rid of the chicken coop and then you could probably try and squeeze in some more animal sheds if you really just have a bit of a play about maybe wanting to like size down some animal sheds and make them really small and you could probably play about a bit but for for what i wanted to build i just thought one animal shed one chicken coop and then just five planters and just some like bits and bobs should do the job and yeah like i said i'm really happy with this build also ends up having a water mill is that what it's called a the wheel thing that i've just placed down i really wanted to include it in this build because i wanted to basically build you know, if you've seen my huge family farm, I built it like two years ago when the Cottage Living Expansion Pack came out. In that video, I said that I wanted to basically build like the ultimate farm. I basically wanted this to be the exact same thing, but just on a smaller scale. So it's still got all of like the classic farming kind of items. There also ends up being a little fishing post. So your sins can come fishing here. There also ends up being the little bunny rabbit hole so there is wild rabbits on this lot there is also the little bird tree so your sims can speak to the birds it's just really cute and wholesome and yeah anyway moving on from that and actually getting on and actually talking about what i'm doing right now so as you can see and kind of like i've already mentioned i have already built the main structure of the build i'm currently just going around and just doing some landscaping now probably one of my favorite things about building in the world of henford and bagley is probably just making as much use as i can possible of all the different live edit and debug plants so with the cottage living expansion pack in the actual build and buy menu we didn't get i don't think anyway we didn't really get any flowers or any shrubs i know we got a few different trees that your sims can 
by, but for some reason, all of the really pretty flowers are locked behind the live edit menu, which I, makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever, but the world of Henry Bagley has some really beautiful flowers and shrubs and plants and trees, and to be honest, I do normally use a few of them here and there in some of my other builds in like smaller increments, but where I'm building in the world that these plants and bushes came from, I just basically go to town, so you might see in the landscaping, it's a little bit overgrown, it looks a little bit not not messy not like just basically a little bit more unattended to but i just love it i just have so much fun just using all the different like rose bushes and sunflowers and all the different like overgrown kind of like bushy fluffy tree they're just really pretty and i just love landscaping in this build i also wanted this house to be filled with loads of different ivy pieces so you can see that i've placed down some ivy kind of by the water mill there's some kind of like growing up the side of the house and then on the left hand side i don't know if you're going to be able to see it because there's a few trees kind of blocking it but we've got some really pretty ivy kind of like flower things they're from the uh, i was about to say get to no, it is get together. I was about to say growing together, but there is honestly the, the expansion pack and the DLC names at this point is so confusing to remember. But the uh, get together expansion pack, you know, the one that we got the world of Windenburg. Well, in the build and buy menu, there is these really pretty kind of like ivy flowers, and they come in, I think, pink, white, and I think blue. I basically use them and put them kind of like on the side of the house to make it look like they're growing up the wall. I just love the way the ivy looks in this build. And if you are wondering, the ivy itself, the the more detailed one is from the Discover University live edit menu. And then the other ones that are a little bit more like clumped together. They are from the Cottage Living both live edit menu and then I think also possibly the build and buy it just in case you're curious. But you can see that I just pretty much finished up the landscape on the left hand side. What I wanted to do is I pretty much wanted to build the main structure of the build and then do all the landscaping around it, kind of get the dimensions in for the pond and how big the pond was going to be and pretty much just figure out how much space that I had for the rest of the lot. And so you can see that I just finished up, I placed down some like sunflowers and landscaping, like loads of different rose bushes, I dotted about a few different rocks here and there. I do also end up kind Kind of coming back to that area i'm placing down a live edit fence that's a little bit more curvy and then that is where i place down the little rabbit hole where rabbits will come out of in gameplay but you can see that i've now just started to move over and start focusing on this kind of the the cow animal shed area like the farmy portion of this build so i actually use live edit fences to kind of section off this part of the build now in gameplay you won't run into any issues with it because basically the way that i did it i tried to make it so the animal shed wouldn't interfere with the with the fences now originally the way that you see it right now on the screen there was a few issues when it came around to me playtesting, but like always, I came in, I playtested the build so I could see if there was any problems. The cow's head, I'm not going to lie, did go into the post, but I've sorted it. I've made sure that the animal can kind of like freely roam about. I end up placing down a chicken coop, kind of like in front of and on the right hand side of the animal shed. But when I was playtesting it, the cow kind of their head just went into the chicken coop as well, which really surprised me because before I've literally made like custom sheds for the animals and there didn't seem to be any like rooting issues. But in this build, for some reason, the cow just had a bit of a mind of its own. His head was going into posts, going into chicken coops and stuff. And so when you download this build of the gallery, if you do decide to, or you might notice it in the screenshots, the, the placement of the chicken coop and the animal shed, it might be slightly different because I did have to like budget back a little bit just so then there was no like interference issues with the cow's head going into posts and stuff. But yeah, if you want to download this build of gallery, it all works, it's all completely usable and I made sure that it was realistic. Don't worry, no cow's heads are going to be coming out of the post or anything, but I did just want to mention it just in case you see a difference in the animal shed and the chicken coop placement. But you can see that I've also used another live edit fence kind of coming off the, the animal shed fence and it's this one which is kind of a little bit more overgrown. So the one that I'm talking about, it looks to be just like a standard wooden fence, but the thing that I liked about it, it's got all these like clumps of like bushes or ivy or something growing up here and where the house itself is just surrounded by all this live ivy in you know just like overgrowing the house going up the building going into the roof and stuff it was just so perfect for this build and so i placed that in kind of like a a half square motion and then in the middle of it that's where i placed down some of the planters now like i said i placed down five planters in total so there is enough space so your sims can have one of every single type of oversized crop 
in in the actual like version that i've uploaded onto the gallery i think there's going to be mushrooms and lettuce i believe off memory they're what i planted just because if i'm being honest they're just what my sim had in her pockets and so i just thought i'd use them but yeah there is enough so your sims can grow one of every single type of vegetable and then around it i placed down the little bird tree so your sims can go over there chat to the birds become friends with the birds there is also this live edit it looks to be like an older like tractor wheel or something but i place it down and then using the tool mod i kind of like rotated it ever so slightly to make it look like it was leaning i placed down some like buckets and then i end up placing down some like fertilizers and watering cans and stuff and you can see that over here i'm just going around and placing down some terrain paint to try and make it feel like the animal shed area is a little bit more realistic which is actually i don't know if i've mentioned this before but this is actually something that i've really struggled in because when it comes around to placing down like mud and just stuff on the floor where it should be like an animal's place i just really struggled to get the terrain painting right and so yeah i tried my best of it but i basically used a combination of a few different muds and then a few different like worn down grasses just to make it feel like the animal you know they chomp at the grass so the grass is a little bit more patchy over here and then you can see this is where i placed down the chicken coop as well as some kind of like barrels of hay so you see where the hay is on the left hand side of the animal shed i end up moving the chicken coop over there i slightly adjusted the fence a little bit just so i've got a little bit more space and then in the placement of where the chicken coop is i then placed down the hay just because that was where i was running into some issues with the with the cow's head just going into the chicken coop i really don't understand why it was an issue in this build because like i said i've previously literally made custom animal sheds i've made sheds in like japanese builds where i've sized it down really small and then basically it built my own animal shed and it's never seemed to be an issue but in this build it was something that i was i was struggling with but yeah like i said i've play tested it and now it should be all fully functional so you shouldn't run into any problems the only one thing that I wasn't able to fit into this build which i feel like would have been just so perfect and just it would have made complete sense but it was the flower arranging table you might have seen that i did try and like squidge it in to like the animal area but it just seemed a bit out of place and it just didn't seem like it it fitted to be able to have your sims make like bunches of flowers and then right next door is like the cow so i didn't add in the flower arranging table but i mean there is everything else that i feel like you might want to play with on a farm like i said there is like the washing line there is like a little wash tub so your sims can wash their clothes by their hand to me that's very farm like and very like cutesy and wholesome and so i wanted to include that like i said there's like the fishing posts and the rabbits and the birds and just all the other like farmy bits and bobs i was able to fit in but yeah unfortunately i just i couldn't find the right space to fit the flower arranging table but moving on from that as you can see i have now moved on into the inside of this house so i started off by like the little entrance hallway I've just realised, I completely forgot to tell you how I decorated the bedrooms in this house. So if you are curious, I mean, we're going to very shortly move on and you'll see them. But I decorated the rooms to be one for, I was personally thinking a single parent, but a single parent or a set of parents. Then there is an infant's room as well as a kid's room. Now, when I was building this house, I was thinking about the idea of a single mum living here with her two daughters. And so I tried to make it very like light colours, quite floral. There's a lot of flowers and lots of just very cutesy things in this house. But yeah, I had the idea of a single mum that lives in this farm. She's got a cow, she's got a few chickens, she loves gardening and she lives here with her infant and her, her kid who's a little girl. But you can see that in the actual entrance hallway, I placed down this like coat rack, which is from I think seasoned or it might potentially be from the cats and dogs expansion pack but you can see like the color theme that i went for in like the entrance hallway i tried to carry that on throughout the rest of the house i use a lot of cats and dogs in this build as well as a lot of cottage living which i feel like cottage living is probably a bit of a given but in terms of like the the building style in terms of like the inside furnishings i just wanted it to be really cutesy and really sweet and really wholesome and just quite i don't want to say feminine but quite stereotypically feminine if you want to put it that way i just i love the way the inside of this build came together it just looks so just so homey and wholesome but you can see in the actual entrance hallway as well as the little coat rack i placed down a shelving unit right by the front door the one that i've used is from cottage living but it's perfect because if you look at it it looks like it's got a shopping bag attached to it so maybe like the mum has popped into like henfield and bagley's village which is finchwick she's gone and got all the groceries or maybe she's got a few groceries the rest of them that she's grown and there's also like a little watering can on it i then moved objects a debug handbag <laughs> onto the actual the actual like shelf itself to make it just feel a little bit more 
just custom to this household and then there is also an umbrella rack in the hallway surprisingly when it came around to placing this build i didn't run into a problem with that umbrella rack i feel like i say this all the time but whenever i place down that umbrella rack into any of my builds nine times out of ten if not 9.5 times out of ten i've run into a problem with it because it's so you just can't have any objects near it and so when i place it down I, I was probably placing it down thinking probably gonna have to move that over didn't run into any problems with it in terms of the inside in terms of like the furnishings i didn't have to move anything apart from one chair or actually it's, it's it's a high chair but i'll show you what i'm talking about when i've actually moved on to it but yeah the the umbrella rack surprisingly actually works 100 percent. but in the hallway as well i placed down like a little armchair from cats and dogs that kind of like cottagey kind of armchair was pretty much the summary of how i wanted the inside to be it's this really like tall backed armchair it's got this really comfy looking blanket just over the top of it it just looks so just so homey and so i place that down to the hallway but now you can see that i've moved on and i've started furnishing both like the kitchen area but then it also ends up being quite open plan so it ends up having the lounge space in here as well as a small little dining room table so in the actual kitchen itself i decided to use the cottage living counters and then i basically just pulled out loads of different like debug menu items those are different clutter and currently i basically wanted to clutter up the the bottom portion of these counters again just to make it a little bit more custom to this household and so you can see what i'm doing i'm basically placing down these counters and then i have this trick which i've used literally for years at this point and honestly it is so handy basically whenever i want to clutter up something but i need to move away i always place down these tall lamps just so i can kind of get the idea of okay if i place a lamp here and i place a lamp here i'll normally place it down in like an area where I can't place anything so you know like on the side of a counter where it might it might the counter might end or something I'll basically place down these lamps on the side of it and then I know the space that's in between the lamps is a space that I can clutter it up it looks like an absolute mess on the screen I feel like because I often get questions of people asking me what I'm doing with the lamps why do I place down loads of lamps and then delete them I literally just place them down pretty much to get the dimensions of the space that I want to clutter up and to be honest when it came around to doing this house there was just so many different clutter pieces that i really wanted to use in the kitchen but the thing is i didn't really have enough space and so i thought okay well i'm going to take advantage of the end pieces that we've got from the counters because they've kind of got some like built-in shelves they're not shelves that stereotypically and normally that you can actually place things onto but where i place the lamps i basically placed them at the end of the the counters themselves so then the space in between it was kind of like dead empty space i then got the same counter popped it onto the wall i then used the red shelf which you can see that i'm using the red shelf over here it's basically something that you can use to get objects to a certain height but i put the counter on the other wall got the red shelf so the same counter put it to the same height as what the shelf is that i wanted to clutter up i then moved away the counters on the space that i wanted to clutter up and then basically in the air I placed down like these like dishes and like loads of extra like plates and bowls and stuff and then I was able to move the counters back in and it looks like the the actual stuff that I placed down is part of the actual unit and it's not just something that's plonked into thin air. Using the red shelf is really handy but hopefully that was easy to understand as well but yeah I often get questions about why I do that it's honestly it's just because I love doing clutter and sometimes sometimes i want to go overboard and sometimes i never know how much space i've actually got to use and so using tall lamps as kind of like a guideline for what space i actually have is super handy and honestly i recommend it but yeah in the actual like clutter that i placed down i think i ended up placing down like a casserole dish which is from i think the country kitchen kit i wanted to definitely use that somewhere in this build because it's just so perfect for a little like wholesome farm so i placed that down into the unit also placed down at some extra pots the ones that i use are from cottage living i use the same pot i just use it in different swatches and size one down to make it look like it was a little bit smaller but i just merged them into the counter and if you're wondering in gameplay your sims honestly they don't even realize it's there like it's just it's just for you just so you can see that there is a little bit more clutter and like i said there was just more things in this kitchen like more clutter pieces than space and so i just I tried to make the use of the empty spaces underneath the clutter and it just it feels a little bit more custom to this household but currently you can see that i've moved over and i've started doing like the the seating area of this room like i said it's like an open plan kitchen lounge space and then also like a really small little dining room so in the actual like lounge portion i use the sofa that we got from the growing together expansion pack it's currently in like this cream swatch with this blue blanket purely for the fact of i feel like every single time i've gone to use this new sofa i always use it in the same swatch 
I end up changing the swatch because <laughs> the swatch that I normally end up going for actually just suited the house better. So you'll see when I move on, I start doing the bathroom kind of like at the end, I realized that I just wanted to use a different swatch of it. So I do decide to switch that out. You would have also noticed that in the, in the lounge room, I tried to do something with the rugs. I tried to basically make a custom rug because I wanted to use it, this really nice rug that we got from the Cats and Dogs expansion pack. It's kind of like a cream rug. But I was also debating using one of the rugs that we got from the Growing Together expansion pack. And I realized the reason why I wanted to use the rug from the Growing Together EP is because it has little tassels on the end of it and it just looks really like dainty and cutesy. And so I realized I wanted to use the tassels and I didn't actually really so much care about the actual color swatch of the rug. So what I tried to do is basically using this rug, which I think is from um, the laundry day stuff pack it basically has these really nice tassels on like the ends of it i basically put down loads of them i think i put down like four in total spent absolutely forever trying to get them to be the correct placement get it so the tassels like perfectly line up with one another and then i plopped the rug from cats and dogs on top of it to then make it look like that rug then has tassels i spent so long doing it in the end i didn't even like it but i thought i'd keep it in just so you could see kind of like my thought process and kind of the idea that i had in that room but yeah that is like a nice little idea by the way if you ever want to create like a custom rug you can merge in rugs that have other like things like tassels underneath rugs and as long as the rug that you want to be on top is the the last rug that you've placed then you can basically make custom rugs in the game but yeah i decided not to go for that because i just didn't like the way it looked in the end after spending what felt like forever doing it but also in that room just kind of like tucked behind the sofa that ends up being a tiny little dining room table that ends up having two chairs and then one higher chair now when it came around to playtesting this build i playtested it with an adult sim an infant who I then aged up to be a toddler and then place tested it with a toddler. Even though I didn't decorate the room to be a toddler or like the bedrooms, I do place down like the higher chair and then also the potty. So I wanted to make sure once the infant had aged up, all the toddler related items that I placed down were still usable. So I play tested it with, yeah, like I said, an infant, a toddler, and then a kid as well, as well as like the normal adult sim. But when it came round to my sim actually placing down the toddler into the higher chair, the way that I placed down the higher chair, there's kind of like a wall behind it. I think because your sim is kind of like lift the toddler into the higher chair it just wasn't usable all i did was switch around like the rotation of the chairs so instead of the higher chair being like in front of a wall it ends up being a chair and the chair is 100 percent usable but i think just for the animation of putting like an infant or a toddler into the higher chair it just it, it didn't work but either way as you would have seen i just quickly did the bathroom or one of the bathrooms in this house i am so obsessed with the first bathroom because i use this shelf which we got from the high school years expansion pack i don't know why i've never thought to do this before in the past but it's just so perfect for bathrooms basically the one that i use it's this really like antique looking shelf it is just so perfect for this build i basically place it down into the corner i then moved objects those are different like towels and washing baskets and just like bathy looking items like bath salts and maybe uh, some shampoo and conditioner and stuff but i merged it onto the shelves itself which i love the look of that but then also next to it it's kind of like where the bathtub is but then next to the bathtub i found this basket that we got from the jungle adventure debug menu so you know when you get your sims to travel to the world of self dorada and then it's kind of like them little market stalls the basket that i placed down into the bathroom your sims can actively buy that in game but i placed down this basket next to the bathtub and then i found these like sponges and rubber duckies and just kind of like bath toys and i put it into the basket size the basket up ever so slightly and i was thinking that maybe the the kid and the infant maybe that's like where they keep all their bath toys and it's just like plopped down next to the bathtub i thought that was such a sweet idea and i really love the way the bathrooms turned out in this house i'm just I'm just so in love with them, but I do show you the furnishing of both of them, by the way, which I never normally do, but I'm just, I was a massive fan. And also with the first bathroom that I showed you, it does also double up to be like the laundry room, which I normally show you laundry room spaces anyway, but yeah, I'm just so happy with the bathrooms in this house. But as well as that, you'd quickly just see me do the infant's room. So in the infant's room, I use the same crib that I must admit, I keep on using the same one crib for infants. I did try and use the other crib variation that we have got, but I'm just, I wasn't a massive fan of it in terms of I couldn't manage to make it fit with like the rest of the house in terms of like the colour scheme and stuff. And so I use a crib in like a, a light wooden swatch with like a little pink, like what's it called, cushion in it or something. And then also place down one of them 
almost like corner sofas that we got from cats and dogs. I placed one of them down into the window. I then placed down like the play mat onto the floor. There is a changing table in there as well as like a tiny little wardrobe, which I feel like that wardrobe is a perfect size for like toddler rooms as well as infants rooms. Because realistically, in real life, when you have like a toddler in real life, like my nephew, he doesn't have a massive wardrobe. He has like a small little wardrobe because he's small. He's got small clothes. And so that wardrobe is just so perfect for like infant and toddler rooms. I placed that down into there. Also I placed down some like shelving units and just some like decorations. I use these wall decals that we got from the Werewolves game pack. And there's one that's like a moon, perfect for this build. So I plopped it kind of like above the crib. And there is also one of an owl as well. And then also in that room, I placed down some like toys onto the sofa. There's like a toy box and just loads of other like infinity bits and bobs but now as you can see i've now moved on into the next bedroom which is the parents bedroom or like the single mum's room now when it came around to decorating this room to be honest with you i actually had a little bit too much space to make it into a bedroom well no i, I made it work but like when i was coming in and i was decorating it i didn't want to place down like, loads of different like objects, loads of different activities, skill building items into the room because when I was decorating her bedroom, I was more so thinking she would literally just go in there to sleep and maybe like change her clothes. In terms of spending her day-to-day -day life, she's outside, she's tending to the cows and the chickens and you know, she's doing gardening or maybe you can find her in the kitchen doing a little bit of canning or something. I feel like in terms of parent, I, I, I never really decorate parents' bedrooms to be somewhere where you're actually going to find parents. Maybe it's just me, but I just, I always like parents' bedrooms just to have, you know, chest of drawers, a bed, maybe a bookcase, and then, you know, that's pretty much it. And, and I just never know how to fill them out. In that room, I end up placing down the bed that we got from the high school years expansion back. I also tried to place down a bookcase into the corner, but I just, I didn't like the way it looks. So then I end up switching it out to be one set of chest of drawers. It ended up being two in that room. But the one that I switched out the bookcase with is kind of like these suitcasey looking objects. So we got them from the Werewolves game pack. And I was thinking that maybe this is where the household keeps all their storage. Maybe it's where they keep like extra just stuff for the farm. Or maybe it's like old memories that have like, or maybe, or maybe just like stuff that's accumulated over the years. They're just stored in the chest of drawers. I was more so thinking it was like a chest rather than a closed changing unit, if that makes any sense. But then it also placed like another chest of drawers in the corner with a mirror on it. And there is also like a little armchair in that room as well as a plant. Like I said, I just struggled decorating that bedroom because I felt like I had too much space. It was like a massive bedroom and I just, I didn't know how to fit it out. But now you can see that I've moved on and I started decorating the second bathroom. So in the second bathroom, I think it's termed a Jack and Jill. I think that's the right terminology for it anyway. But basically the, the bathroom is kind of like an ensuite, which leads from the mum's room, but then also the kids room as well. So you can't get to it from like the main hallway space, but you can get from it from one of the two bedrooms. But in the bathroom, it's quite similarly decorated to the other one it's got the same bathtub it's got a little bit of a bigger like sink counter unit i placed down like some bathroom clutter onto it like some soap dispensers some like little baskets of lotion also like toothbrush holder and stuff there's a mirror in that room and then also a toilet there ends up being no shower in this house by the way which i i probably could have placed down a shower but when i was building this house i was thinking that this is like a little bit more of a a rural cottage it's not really like a high technology space so i don't know if you would have noticed but in this house, there's like no laptop, there's no PC, there is no like flat screen TV. There is a TV in the lounge room, but it's like a smaller little retro one. And to me, I feel like showers are a little bit modern. So I didn't place one down into this house, but of course there is space for it if you do decide that you want one. But you can see that I've now moved over into the last room in this house, which is the little girl's room. So in here, I really wanted it to feel like maybe all of the furniture pieces were like hand-me-down furniture pieces. So you might notice the bedside table that I've used and then the like big wardrobe, they're a little bit more like rustic looking. The wardrobe looks like it's got like some dents in it, looks like a few things are like bashed into it over the years and stuff. Maybe it was like the mum's furniture when she was growing up. And then all of like the toys and activities in this room, I purposely used ones which were like, cheaper looking or like maybe like makeshift ones so like the doll's house i used the one from eco lifestyle because maybe like the mum built it maybe she bought a kit and she built the doll's house herself instead of like going to the shop and buying one and then like the drawing table again that's like a cardboardy looking object and then i also placed down the little teddy bear that's got like a tutu and fairy wings again it's on like a cardboard box it just looks a little bit more like rustic in this room which i absolutely love but in this room in total that ends up being like another toy box ends up being the bed which is from 
from high school years and then yeah like i said like the the doll's house the wardrobe and then i think that is pretty much it oh and an actual teddy bear so it seems to interact with it because the teddy bear that's got the tutu is just purely decoration unfortunately but apart from that i am going to go around the room finish it off and that is pretty much it so anyway guys i'm going to end this voiceover right here as always you can download this build via the gallery my gallery id is jessica pie yt or you just search for the hashtag jessica pie yt or just the hashtag jessica pie as always thank you guys so much for watching this video and as always if you do like my content then please do subscribe and hopefully i'll see you in my next sims 4 speedboarding video bye guys